Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Did you know this episode comes with a free gift? It's a webinar for aspiring authors who want to learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing books. You can access this free training instantly at shewroteabook.com slash bonus. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number 51 of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Pat Obermeyer, author of the book, The President Factor, the reality show that rocked a nation. The President Factor is a humorous take on national politics, the media circus surrounding it, and what happens when the major candidates running for president participate in a reality show designed to show how they handle crisis situations. Pat Overmeyer's debut novel, The President Factor, the reality show that rocked a nation, was released in September. She spent close to 20 years in the TV industry in New York City and has been honored with four Emmy Awards. Again, her book is called The President Factor, the reality show that rocked a nation. You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com slash 51. So, Pat, it's such a pleasure to have you as a guest today, especially now that this is a really hot topic. I would love to know a little bit more about what inspired you to write and publish this book. Oh, sure. Well, first off, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I really appreciate it. Um, What inspired me to write the book was the election in 2008. Um, I remember when Sarah Palin entered the race uh, in 2007, and then I was talking to a friend um, as the election was, you know, heating up in 2008. And um, I was up in Buffalo, New York, which is my hometown, and my friend was back in New York. I had come up here for, you know, a little holiday. It was in October. And I was talking to him, and I said, oh, my goodness, look at the people that are running for office we should have a reality show to show how they handle crisis situations. Oh, my God, that's a screenplay. So I was in writing screenplays at the time. So actually the President Factor started out as a screenplay. So I guess you could say Sarah Palin um, inspired me to write my book. (laughs) Well, thank you, Sarah Palin. (laughs) That's awesome. Um, So so that's interesting. So it started out as a screenplay, but – converted into a novel. Can you tell me a little bit about why that had happened? Well, I finished the screenplay and went through some rewrites, which you usually do with um, an editor. And then I I couldn't get any traction on it. What, one of the funny things that happened with it is I had pitched it to, you know, you, you send it out, you pitch it to people. And I got this response back from an, a company in L.A., um, um, you know, he produced films, and they said, oh, we don't think we can produce this show. <laughs> I think they thought I was pitching them the real, the real reality show that the candidates have to go through. I thought that was kind of interesting that somebody would actually think that this could actually be true. Um, wow. And I couldn't get any traction on it, to be honest. I get a lot of feedback. Wow, great dialogue. Very cool. I knew some people in the business um, after working years in, in uh, television in New York City. And um, they were like, wow, this is really good. You need to attach somebody to it in order to get it uh, produced. And I just didn't have the time or, uh, honestly, the connections in that area to get it done. So it kind of fell by the wayside. But in, in, the, in the meantime, um, Susanna Tubert, who is the director or was the director of the Teatro Stage Fest in New York City, uh, was very interested in it. Um, the main character is Hispanic, Adam Marez, and uh, the Teatro Stage Fest brings uh, producers and singers and uh, tele- not television shows, I'm sorry, uh, small theatrical performances to New York City to introduce people to the wide range of um, things that are out there in Spanish. And, of course, this book is not in Spanish, and neither was the screenplay. But she liked the idea that the lead character was Hispanic. So she was setting up a stage reading for me in New York, which was really amazing, and that was really cool. And then she left and went to L.A. for a job. So these, <laughs> this is typical of the business. And so I just sort of um, let the screenplay go and got really working on my my 24-hour-a-day job. <laughs> not really, but it seemed like it at times, and television. And uh, then I decided after a few years, gosh, I should bring that back. 
uh, and turn it into a book because I really like it. I'm so glad you did. I'm so glad you did. Such a great too. concept. <laughs> it was so much so fun. Cool. It oh, was I'm really sure. Fun. I'm sure. So, so what's what's your uh, what are your thoughts on an actual reality TV show star running for president? I know for this that's next term. Really kind of, it is kind <laughs> of interesting and amusing. Um, um, I had the, uh, a different title for the book uh, originally, and uh, uh, then it turned out that some uh, small town in the middle of the country actually did a reality show <laughs> where they brought in some local people to pretend to be um, running for president. I didn't want to kind of muddy the waters when people started looking for the book, so I changed the title. Uh, but I had, you know, um, a lot of the reality show experience in mind, and I think it's it's very different because it, it, in that show, where of course we're talking about Trump, he was the – nobody was putting him on the hot seat, whereas in my show – the candidates have to be on the hot seat. So it would be wonderful if we could do it. I, every, every time I mention the the concept, people say, oh, wouldn't that be great? And I'm, I think, yeah. But look what just happened recently when um, they were put on the hot seat in a debate and nobody wanted to answer. So um, the premise of the reality show, the president factor in my book, is it's voted on by Congress. <laughs> they had no choice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're forced. <laughs> Everybody got up in arms, you know. Um, uh, I won't give too much away, but just to say that our hero um, actually puts his foot in his mouth and <laughs> stands up in C-SPAN and spouts off, and then everybody hears it and go, yeah, we should vote on that, and it winds up being a reality. So he's sort of, sort of stuck with it, and he has no choice. Which That's would, awesome. Wouldn't we love that, though? <laughs> Yeah, I seriously, I would. I mean, I always think about like my one of my favorite political scenes, not fictional scenes, is um, Jeff Daniels in Newsroom. Mm -hmm. And in, in, it's like the first five minutes of that show. And and he just he just goes off on a rant like, you know what, let me tell you what I think. And then he just he just spells it all out. And I always I do kind of want to see a politician just lose it and just say, come on, enough of this crap. This is what we need to really be doing, and I think it would be. I just think it would be great. So, what? What? Why did you choose to make your hero Hispanic? I thought it was time um, for that to happen. And remember, this was written um, my screenplay. I remember, like you know, I just told you this a couple of minutes ago. So why? Why would you remember? But <laughs> um, it was in 2008, there were no um, Hispanic candidates running for president. Um, there are now. I mean, now today we do have that. But back then, there there wasn't. So I thought it was it was time for that to happen. So I didn't want to change. I wasn't going to change the the whole scope of the book um, after we had some candidates running this time. Um, so I left it. I left it. But I think it's a really important thing um, to have happen. So that's that was very important to me. Can I ask you um, why Hispanic male and not a female? Because I really didn't think that I kind of looked to the future and kind of saw Hillary in my, my mind back then. Um, and I didn't, by the time the book would come out or the screenplay would come out, I didn't want it to muddy any of the waters um, for her or for anybody's uh, feeling about a female president in case they did harbor some sort of um, attitude toward that. I didn't want to exploit that or uh, put the book in any position to um, sway anybody's mind, because I think that's really important here. This is, a, this is pure fiction. It's satire. It's humor. And, and, but again, the reality show and the perception of the reality show uh, in the book, and, and this is true, reaches far beyond the people that are just watching the show. The people who are in the United States, rather, the people in other countries look at the reality shows. They look at everything that everybody's saying, and they think, wow, that's – and they can manipulate it. And the, the, what you find out in the book is how easy it is to manipulate what people say. Very, very simple. So this book could be um, construed by other people, could take on a life of its own uh, with a female uh, – character. So I, I was really conscious of that. I didn't want to do that. Curious, though, do you feel like um, you might want, in the future, like if you feel inspired to write another story or another book, do you would you ever consider making your hero uh, a woman in a in a higher role? 
Well, yeah, Vice sure. President. Absolutely. I mean, I, and ab- absolutely. I, I fully embrace that. I, I, I embrace anybody as, as a presidential candidate. I don't look at the, yeah. you know, race or sex or anything when I look at them. Um, but, you know, that said, I thought it was time for us to even just to entertain a Hispanic character, um, not a specific person. So, Right now, and because they're Democrat, our, our Adam Reyes is Democrat, so he does not really representing anybody right now currently that, um, if anybody is talking about representation, um, that anybody could relate to, whereas a female character would, you'd be saying. But his, um, his vice president is a black woman, Zaniba St. George, so I've got a woman there. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. Awesome. All Very cool. represented here. Yeah, I, I figured you would have. I mean, you sound like someone who who's, who who really thought this through, um, and and even though it's fiction, I mean, you, and and it's funny and satire. I mean, obviously, you still have a point of view here, and and I think it's I think it's it's moving. It, it's it's a really good point of view to make. <laughs> is my point where I'm going with this. So I wanna I wanna switch gears just a little bit. Um, you talked about being in the TV TV industry. Um, I want to know, how did that uh, come into play when you were writing your book? Well, my years in television exposed me to um, thousands and thousands of hours in an edit room post-production, which means after you're shooting something, you take it into an edit room, and then you put put together whatever it is you're putting together, Uh, be it a uh, 30-second commercial, which was the majority of what I did, or some longer pieces for the networks like CBS News, um, when they're taking something out, they call them the upfronts, and they present to all the advertisers, this is what we have coming up, um, look at how terrific we are. I mean, every every network does them. Um, and, and then they show them and advertisers buy advertising on the, on the different shows. So I would produce those too. Um, so I had all of that experience. Uh, I also was the vice president of creative services for New York One News and all of Time Warner Cable News Channel. That was the last position I held before I decided to leave the industry. And um, I had slews of graphic artists. I was responsible for the the graphic look, the opens of the shows, the print ads, um, everything creative design-wise for um, these shows. I also did work like that for um, other networks. I launched a network for Rainbow Media with all of that. Um, Rainbow is Bravo Independent Film Channel, uh, AMC. So I know how to physically sit there and um, take things apart. And what you can do, you know, can you take someone who's standing in front of the White House and put them in front of the Eiffel Tower? Well, yeah, you can. Uh, It's going to cost you a lot of money and take a lot of time, but it can be done. So just knowing the technical ins and outs of being able to do that um, was important, and that plays in this uh, in my book. And also just being in newsrooms and those 8 a.m. Monday morning news meetings where you listen to the news director decide what they're going to do, how they're influenced by the, uh, the owners of the company, and things like that. Um, the beauty of New York One News, and I have to say this because this is really important, the news director, who's now the executive vice president of all the news channels, her name is Bern- Bernie Hahn. She, I used to call her my Joan of Arc because Bernie would never be swayed by anybody. She was absolutely amazing. Um, Time Warner Cable owns uh, New York One News, and let's just say somebody might have said, you know, hey, why don't you send a reporter to XYZ? And she would say, why? (laughs) That's not a news story. She was amazing. So she held firm to journalistic standards. And I've worked other places, and they will be nameless, where that's not the case. So... I see, and you can see how very easily news uh, can be swayed. Um, and if, if you can sway news, imagine what you can do with an entertainment program, which is what this uh, uh, the reality show is about. The president factor is, is, is entertainment. So you're free range. I mean, it's freewheeling. You can do anything you want. So I just want people to realize that when they're looking at certain things, um, how easy it is to change gears and be manipulated by a bunch of people. Very cool. Well, I'm really glad that you took all of this information and background and, and created a really fun and inspiring book 
Um, what do you love most about being an author? Just the room to be able to do what you just said, <laughs> to be able to have an idea and write it down and just do it for yourself. It's it's amazing. It's fun. It's great. I'm, I'm into flash fiction now. I have uh, some things coming out or something that did come out uh, in the flash fiction press. Uh, that was fun. Um, I'm writing those things. I am working on my another novel that will be out soon, uh, The Love Beep, which is totally different than this one, but it's still humorous. It's uh, a lot of fun. And I can do what I want. There's no one over me saying your content has to be X, Y, Z, and that's what I love about being an author. Great. Thank you, Pat. Thank you so much for being our special guest today. We will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode, and our listeners can find that at shewroteabook.com slash 51 to learn more about our author and her awesome book. Pat, thanks again. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes. And feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments, too. I'd love to hear from you. Are you ready to write your own book? Get started now with my quick and concise webinar so you can learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing your own book. Claim your free gift now at SheWroteABook.com slash bonus. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic. Feel good, make magic now. Lena and Nani will show you how. Ignite that wisdom inside of you. And show the world what you do. To publish, write, and promote. Learn the best way to go. OMG, do it now. Lena and Nani will show you how.